Gift giving for men is difficult, and even more so if you want to give something with meaning. I'll show you how to make a great looking manly bracelet that you'll be proud to give. It's who I am, a little rare, so how I fair, and some mystery, putting it all together, doing what I do. Hi, I'm Tamara Berg, and I'm sort of known for making dainty, delicate jewelry for women. Well, today I've got a project to show you that's decidedly manly, rough and rugged. I like to call it the tough as leather cuff, and we've got a sterling silver embellishment on here. I put on it the word strength, because what man wouldn't like to wear that on a bracelet? And we've got it made out of leather. It's a fantastic gift, and it's way better than those plastic things. So let's get started. We're going to make this embellishment with 24 gauge sterling silver sheet. And the sterling silver comes in different weights or gauges. The higher the number, the thinner the sheet. So we're working with 24 gauge silver. It's relatively heavy. I'm going to make a mark on here for our silver embellishment. And I'm going to use a scrapbooking ruler, actually. It's called a zero center grid ruler from clubscrap.com. It's also used by quilters, but it's a great jewelry making tool as well. So what I'm going to do is measure a piece that is two and a half inches by three eighths. Just take the permanent marker and mark right on the sheet where you're going to make the cut. Now I'm going to cut this with just plain old scissors. You can use tin snips or you can use um, a saw if you want to. I'm using scissors, but know that you're going to ruin your scissors from this point. They will become metal only scissors after you use them for this but it works quite nicely, especially if you're used to using scissors on heavier things. So we just cut that out. Now we are going to put our letters on this piece. And in order to space the letters, I used my computer to create the spacing and I tried lots of different widths um, and different spacing. On most word processing programs, you can compress or expand the space between the letters. So just figure out which one makes the best sense for working with your sheet of silver. So cut that with relatively small margins. Now we are going to again use this ruler to mark the center of the silver. And all you need to do is line it up so you have the same amount of distance on either side of the zero. And then we can mark our center. Now just take the word, fold it right in half, and then we're going to apply it to our silver sheet. Now at this point we really need to use the um, stainless steel block because we're going to be doing our hammering on there. If you don't have a stainless steel block, there's a possibility you could use a very, very hard piece of wood, but the stainless steel block is really the best thing for you. Now we are going to adhere the letters to the sterling silver sheet. Just put a little of that on there. Now we take the word and just line it up with the center there and place that there. There we go. Now we're going to apply our letters. We are using two millimeter letter punches and these are all capitals and a lot of capital letters don't have a top or a bottom but make sure you get it right because you'll really kick yourself if you get it wrong. When I put these in the metal, I usually start in the center and move to the outside because there can be a little bit of distortion on the metal as you work and it minimizes it if you work from the center. So just take that letter punch, line it up with the letter that you've got, and then take your little hammer. Ready sound people? Here we go. It usually takes about three whacks to get the uh, letter just right. The letters that you use from your computer printed page are probably not going to be the same font that your letter punches are, but you're just using them as a guide. So just continue adding the letters onto, oops, that's the wrong letter. Continue adding the letters onto your silver strip until you're finished. I finished stamping all of the letters and now we are going to see the fruits of our labor. So just take off that piece of paper and it looks not so good. So what we're going to do is hammer the back of this piece. This is going to help define the letters and also flatten out the silver.
take a look at it and you will sometimes still see a circle around the letter and that's part of what you want to avoid. So occasionally you might want to use the round side of your hammer but use it very gently. So when you're finished, it'll look like this. Next, we're going to drill the holes in this. We're going to use a setting mat and take an awl and we're just going to mark right in between, kind of in the middle between the end of your letter and the end of the silver. Just make a little mark and that's going to be the starting point for our drill. Do that on both sides. Now I'm using a hand drill for this part of the process. You can absolutely use a power drill, but I find the hand drill is really great for just keeping things small and making it easy. So take the hand drill and drill it right in through the silver. This takes a couple of minutes, but just be patient, it does work. So then when you're finished drilling, the piece will look like this. So now we just need to do a little bit of finishing. We're just going to take some sandpaper, and this is 400 grit sandpaper, so it's quite fine. And just take it and run it across the front of your silver piece. I really recommend doing it on a diagonal. It gives it a really beautiful brushed look, and it helps to take away all of those hammer marks, and it also takes away any ink that's left from the marking. So just go ahead and sand that away, and when we're finished sanding, the piece will look like this. Watch it fall around me and shades plum and bird of green. Okay, now we're going to start with the leather. Um, there are lots of different finishes, lots of different colors of leather. I used sort of a medium grade in brown because it's manly, let's face it. Okay, so we're again going to use the grid ruler from Club Scrap and I'm making this bracelet nine and a half inches long. That does allow for the one inch overlap that we're going to have with a snap on the end. So nine and a half inches and then I'm making it three quarters of an inch wide. And then just using a craft knife, it's amazing they let me carry these things. Make sure you have fantastically new blades because you really don't want to mess up this cut. There we go. In the other direction. And there it is. Putting the cap back on the knife. Okay, ready to go with the leather. Next, we are going to take the grid ruler and finding the center of the bracelet. Again, just matching up the same amount on either side. And we're taking our silver piece and finding the center of that as well on our bracelet. There we go. Now we're going to take the hand drill again and use this to mark where the holes are going to go for the attachment for the silver piece. Okay, then we mark the second hole. Now we're going to mark the outside holes for the second part of our stitch. So make those about three-eighths to a quarter of an inch outside of the first holes. And again, we're just marking them here. We're going to drill them in a second. So that's marked, and then mark on this side. Okay, so we have all of our holes marked here. And then just take that hand drill. We're going to use our setting mat again this time because we don't want to drill through the table. And use the drill just to drill right through the leather. Now it's time to assemble. So we take our finished silver strip and we take our one millimeter raw leather cording and we're going to use this to attach. So first just tie a knot, simple knot in the back of that leather cording and then feed it on through the hole. Then feed it through the silver, bring that through to the front behave. Then bring this through. So we have a little stitch and then just tie another simple knot. Trim away those ends and you don't have to worry about these knots potentially coming out because after this piece gets worn a couple of times the knots in the back are going to harden up and they'll stay really firmly. So then do that on the other side and then your piece will look like this. 
So I have my fabulous silver piece attached to the leather and now I need to close it. So we're going to attach a snap. I've attached one side of the snap and I'm going to show you how I did it. We want to take the stainless steel block again because you do need something really heavy underneath the setting mat in order for this hole to come through. And just take your leather. If you want to mark this, you can take part of your snap and just sort of eyeball where you think you want the center to be. It's usually about half an inch from the end. And just make a little mark there so you have an idea of where you're going to go ahead and place that. Put the punch tool on. Here comes the noise. Ready? Punches right on through and gives us a great hole. Now we are going to put the snap on and there are special tools that come with these snaps in order to set them. I've already set the female part of the snap here and now we're going to add the male side. So this is the button portion of the snap that's going to go in this compartment. Then again we're working on the right side of the leather. Make sure you get that right because you'll really kick yourself if you get this wrong all the way at the end. So you know your snap's going to be coming out this way going into this part so you know you've got it right. So the right side goes down. So we put that on top. So then we place the stud portion in place and then we take this tool that has a concave end to it. Put that on top. Make sure everything's just where you want it. And here we go. Hammer time. Ta-da! We have a finished snap. Then just snap that away. You will need to adjust the silver piece so that it goes in a nice smooth angle. And there we have our tough as leather man cuff. Now you may also want to take your scissors and just round the ends of the leather if you want to. That's an option that you can do. So these are some variations that I've made on the tough as leather cuff. We've got our strength bracelet here and on this one I have rounded the corners just a little bit. I've also made a more feminine version that's a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller and then we have the big manly bracelet with the yin yang and a different stitch for attaching it to the piece. Now also another thing I just wanted to mention was on the letters of the Artiste bracelet I did fill it in with a little bit of ink and brushed away the excess with sandpaper and you'll notice I'm wearing my Naughty bracelet from the Naughty bracelet webisode. Be sure to watch that one. Don't they look great together? So whether you make it your own way or make it the way I've shown you, make it something special. Make something manly. See you next time. To create this project yourself, download this week's design guide. You'll get step-by-step -step instructions along with special make-it-your-own bonus tips and ideas.